Hi, Dr. Rory Patrick Fian here, and today I just want to show you a selection from my Hunter S. Thompson archive, uh, various different artifacts, magazines, and so on from uh, Hunter's early part of his career from around 1961 up until uh, later in his career, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Just to give you an idea of how his uh, writing career progressed during that decade. Um, so, the first thing I want to show you is this print. Uh, it's actually a photo taken of Hunter, um, by Hunter. Uh, it's kind of an early selfie, if you like. Uh, Hunter sitting at his writing desk overlooking the cliffs in Big Sur, California, where he was living. Um, I think it's a, it's a fabulous photograph, but it sets the scene nicely for my first piece that I want to show you uh, in terms of his writing. So, Road Magazine. Uh, this is from October 1961, and it's the first appearance of a, an article by Hunter in a national magazine. Uh, the article was uh, Big Sur, the Tropic of Henry Miller. And it was a portrait of uh, Henry Miller's time in Big Sur and what Hunter was experiencing uh, living there himself. Um, it's quite an interesting article. Uh, it gives you uh, some insights into the kind of writer Hunter was going to become. Um, it also was quite controversial. Uh, it upset a lot of people that were living in Big Sur, uh, including his landlord, who uh, subsequently evicted Hunter. So his uh, celebration at having published this article was short-lived in that regard. Um, but it's quite interesting to see the kinds of publications uh, where Hunter had started his career. Um, this, uh, again, you can see that the article actually uses that photograph that Hunter, that I just showed you. Um, so that's quite interesting. And there's a few more as well various different uh, characters and scenes from Big Sur, uh, all taken by Hunter. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Hunter's first national magazine appearance. And it's uh, quite hard to get these magazines now. They're increasingly difficult to track down. I've, you know, sourced these from every corner of the planet at this point. Um, and yeah, they're, they're few and far between these days. So that's the first piece. And the next piece, again, Rogue Magazine. Um, this was from December 1961. Um, I guess the su success of his first uh, appearance, they were impressed with his writing. And this time he actually gave them a piece of fiction writing. So it's Hunter's first fiction piece that was published as well. Um, Rogue Magazine is kind of a kind of a rival to Playboy, not quite as glamorous. <laughs> and uh, again, this these are this issue is quite hard to find as well now because of the association uh, with Hunter. Um, this one is quite interesting in that it's uh, the fiction piece is about uh, three characters on a yacht. Um, and it's inspired by a trip that Hunter had taken himself on a yacht uh, in his Puerto Rico days, which are just before this period. Um, he took a trip on a yacht with uh, Sandy, his future wife, um, and his friend Paul Seminen. And it wasn't the most uh, enjoyable trip. And uh, you can certainly see that reflected in this fictional piece, but it's quite clearly inspired by that trip. Um, and it's kind of a it's kind of an, a, an early precursor to the rum diary uh, you can certainly see the connection between the two uh, stories uh, it's also quite interesting to see hunter's writing with somebody else's artwork accompanying it other than mr stedman uh, so yeah that's that piece and the next piece is pageant magazine so we're skipping ahead actually a number of years uh, this is 19, September 1965. Uh, Hunter, of course, after 
his, his time in Big Sur, he went down to South America, travelled all over South America, was writing for various uh, newspapers. Uh, so he was working in this period. Um, but uh, on his return to America, he started submitting articles again to various different national publications. And one of them is this one, Pageant. Uh, I think what struck me about this particular uh, magazine is the sheer size of it. It's absolutely tiny. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, it's quite an interesting artefact uh, from Hunter's career. Uh, the article in question is called It Ain't Hardly That Way No More. Um, Hunter makes a number of different appearances in this magazine over the years. I have pretty much all of them here. Um, so yeah, we'll move on. We'll see more of these as I go on. Um, the next piece, uh, I spent many, many years trying to track this down. Uh, very, very difficult to find. Um, spider. So it was a student publication from Berkeley, uh, California. And um, yeah, there you go. Spider. You can actually see this uh, included, of uh, this photograph uh, of this magazine in Margaret's book. Um, and Hunter's uh, contribution to this is Collect Telegram from a Mad Dog. Uh, I think it's also published in The Great Shark Hunt. Um, it pops up from time to time in various different uh, books of Hunter's. Um, I have the entire uh, run of Spider Magazine. Uh, there's, I think, six, seven issues. Uh, very difficult to find them all together in one piece. So I was, you know, jumped on the opportunity when I saw them available. Um, yeah, that's Hunter's piece there. So, interesting little artifact, Spider. And this is the rest of the spider collection that I have here. Uh, quite an interesting publication. Uh, so that's that. And the next piece, Pageant Magazine again. And uh, this one is from December 1965. And Hunter's contribution here is, oh wait, let me see, The 450 Square Mile Parking Lot by Hunter Thompson. So, yeah, that's another quite an interesting uh, little little artifact. Page 52. Let's see here. That's Hunter's article there. So, yeah, for many years while Hunter was uh, prior to Hell's Angels, you know, he was writing for various different publications. Uh, some years were quite better than others you know but uh he really did struggle as a writer you can read all about that in the proud highway hunters collection of letters and uh, you can really see uh how difficult he found it uh, to make it as a writer um but with the hell's angels book that breakthrough really changed his entire career um and that's where my next piece is related to um you can see hunters moving up in the world of uh journalism uh this is esquire from january 1967 and you can see here it's uh, quite a big magazine uh, i was i was shocked actually when i saw this the, the sheer size of it compared to even today's esquire magazine this is absolutely a lavish heavy magazine and the article that's in this is, um, I'll show it to you here now. So it is Lifestyles, The Cyclist, a 4th of July weekend with wheels. Uh, it's uh, connected to the Hells Angels uh, book. And let's see if I can get it up here. There's some really great photos in this um, of the Hells Angels. Let me see. start of the article. I uh, just want to show you some of the 
photographs that are accompanying this. There we go. So that. There's another one of the Hells Angels. So it's quite interesting to see uh, Hunter's, you know, the different publications that he's uh, contributing to and how the success of the Hells Angels uh, book has propelled him into the pages of, of Esquire. Um, despite that, you know, Hunter continued to publish articles, you know, various different publications. Um, the next one is actually this one here, Cavalier Magazine. Uh, Knights and the Rustic is the article in this. Uh, again, it's uh, kind of a profile of uh, from his Big Sur days. If I can find it here for you. So. There we go. Knights and the Rustic. It's actually... Uh, it's actually more focused actually on Glen Ellen, California. Um, it's a profile of um, the Rustic Inn, which uh, it's a saloon that uh, was in the, La in the Jack London uh, tradition, according to Hunter. Uh, it's not a very long article, but interesting nonetheless. So that that one in Cavalier was August uh, 1967 and the next one again pageant and this one is why boys will be girls a special report on how more and more he's behave like she's by Hunter S Thompson and what's interesting about this is that it's got a little profile of Hunter as well um, cool facts about a cool cat <laughs> uh, and it quotes Hunter on himself where it says Hunter Thompson is a freelance writer and ex-foreign correspondent also the author of a fantastic bestseller entitled Hell's Angels A Strange and Terrible Saga his next bestseller will be a savage and defamatory novel called The Rum Diary interesting very interesting um so yeah uh that was quite interesting to see the mention of uh the rum diary there and hunter believing that it was going to be his next release of course it didn't get published till i think it was 1998 after johnny depp found the manuscript in his uh basement in woody creek at old farm um it also quotes Hunter here saying that he's 29 years old and is responsible for a blonde wife, Sandy, and a three-year-old son, Juan. So, there we go. Pageant. And again, pageant, another one. So this one is from September 1969. There's one or two missing from this timeline that I haven't quite got my hands on yet. Um... But uh, this is, for the most part, what Hunter had been producing. Um, so this one, of course, you can see there, Ethel Kennedy on the cover. And the one is Those Daring Young Men in Their Flying Machines by Hunter Thompson, page 68. Again, there's uh, some illustrations that are not by Ralph Steadman accompanying the text. Quite interesting to see that. Okay, so then we're moving on and we are, we are we, pageant. So, Scanlands. So, we're, this is the post-Hells Angels period, of course. 
Um, but this is Hunter's next big breakthrough uh, with Scanlon's magazine. Um, I have the complete collection of Scanlon's, which again are becoming very difficult to actually find. Uh, the value is shooting up, particularly the issues with articles in them by Hunter. Um, so this first one, Scanlon's first issue. And this one has The Temptations of John Claude Killy by Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, let's show you that. Again, it's quite interesting to see Hunter's work uh, illustrated by someone other than Ralph Steadman. So that's The Temptations of John Claude Killy. Some great artwork there as well. Um, so yeah, he had been uh, turned down by Playboy magazine uh, with that article and because uh, they were afraid they'd upset their sponsors uh, with some of the stuff Hunter had said in the article. Um, but Warren Hinkle had uh, no reservations about upsetting anybody and uh, the perfect match with Hunter and so that was the start of his short-lived but hugely influential career at uh, Scanlon's so that's part one and as I said I have all the various different Scanlon's uh, there's only seven and eight of them um, this second one is quite interesting in that it has a little record included which is uh, an interrogation tape it was hugely controversial that this was included so there's the actual record uh, it's very hard to find this with the record included so there's that one and this is the most difficult to find uh, issue of Scanlon's and it is the one with uh, the Kentucky Derby is decadent and depraved. Um, I've spent years looking for a good quality copy of this. Um, very difficult to find in this condition. Um, as I said, you know, these are they're in great condition for how old they are, um, but very hard to find these days. So There we go, punching Richard Nixon in the face. Quite a controversial uh, cover. And you can see, of course, uh, the start of Hunter's uh, fantastic collaboration with Rob Steadman. Rob's illustrations are fantastic in this. So, written under duress by Hunter S. Thompson, sketched with eyebrow, pencil, and lipstick by Rob Steadman. Fantastic. You can see more of Ralph's illustrations here at the bottom of this page. And just take a look at this. Absolutely fabulous. Even after all these years, the colours are absolutely amazing. There's another Beautiful illustration at the bottom there of the uh, crowd at the derby. There's another one at the top of this page. Some of the, the riff raff in Louisville. <laughs> and then this is uh, this is something that you'll only see if you actually have this issue. Um, the author as seen by the illustrator. So it's a little portrait of Hunter by Ralph. <laughs> so there. Very interesting to see that. Now, uh, which brings me on to my next piece. Um, this is one of my treasured uh, possessions, really. Uh, it's the Kentucky Derby is decadent and depraved in a book format. There's only 26 copies of this in the world. 
Uh, some of them are in universities, uh, most are in private collections. Uh, I couldn't believe it when I saw this for sale. Um, there we go. So this was produced in uh, Louisville uh, by a publisher located not far from Hunter's childhood home. Um, it's just a really lavish production, uh, really beautiful. Uh, Contra Coup Press in 2009. See there. As I said, uh, I've only ever seen this for sale once, this issue. Uh, it's just really quite beautiful, uh, well put together. Um, so yeah, that's the Kentucky Derby is decadent and depraved book format. Uh, most people don't even know it exists. So that's that. Um, Again, these are just some of the other issues of Scanlon's. Um, this one is particularly notable, um, or certainly stood out to me anyway, uh, in that it has an article uh, about my own home city of Limerick City in Ireland. Uh, so I was quite shocked to see an article about Limerick City in Scanlon's magazine. You can see there, Maoists in Limerick is the article. Um, yeah, so that was... That was an unusual one to find for me. Um, again, Scanlon's artwork there by R. Crumb, very distinctive. Um, okay, let's see this one. So Hunter didn't contribute to all of these, only certain issues, um, but they're they're fantastic magazines. You know, some of the other people you'll see, you'll recognize. You know, Paul Krasner. Uh, so, again, Scanlon's magazine. These are all 1970, uh, short run, as I said. Um, this one is quite notable in that the article by Hunter that's in it is the police chief, uh, but it's credited to Raoul Duke. Um, so that's uh, quite interesting. So I'll just show you that. Page 63. That's the start of the article there. At the end of the article, it says, Raoul Duke is a well-known weapons advisor and consultant to Hunter S. Thompson, candidate for Sheriff of Aspen, Colorado. So, interesting little artifacts. Um, the next pieces of course are where Hunter really starts to make his impact uh, as a writer uh, in Rolling Stone magazine. Um, and speaking of his campaign for Sheriff, uh, the article in question, Hunter's first appearance for Rolling Stone uh, freak power in the Rockies, which was uh, it says by Dr. Hunter S. Thompson, candidate for sheriff, and it was Hunter's uh, just a little article about what he was trying to achieve in Aspen. Uh, it's quite interesting, you know, October first, nineteen seventy. To anyone who hasn't seen a, an issue of Rolling Stone magazine from back then, um, it's quite interesting in how they actually how they're folded so they, they open out like this and it's like a proper newspaper almost um, very cheap uh, paper as you can see it's uh, the quality isn't good at all I mean certainly in comparison to any of the previous magazines this is cheap newspaper it's um, it's quite hard to keep these in good condition because of the quality of the paper. Uh, so f to find any copies that are not, you know, completely yellowed uh, or falling apart is is quite difficult. Um, this is in reasonable condition, quite a clean cover, um, and the insides are the same. Um, anyway, of course. Everybody knows Hunter's most famous contribution to Rolling Stone magazine. 
uh, November 11th, 1971. And that is the first appearance of Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, part one, uh, with Ralph's gorgeous illustrations throughout. These are pretty good uh, issues. Uh, the quality is quite good. Um, still very, you know, white. They haven't yellowed with age. Um, just at the margins, but um, otherwise, you know, very, very good condition. Um, very difficult to find these days in, in this condition. Um, you'll pay several hundred dollars for a copy that's in, that's in good condition. Um, you can just see the infamous Lizard Lounge by Ralph Stedman. Um, yeah, so it's uh, that was part one, and their fourth anniversary issue, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, A Savage Journey to the Heart of the American Dream by Raul Duke. Not credited to Hunter, but to Raul Duke. Um, yeah, so that's the first one. And the second one is here, again, quite good condition. Um, caption for this uh, illustration by Ralph is the sight of a 344 pound police chief from Waco, Texas, necking openly with his 290 pound wife when the lights were turned off for a dope film was just barely tolerable. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, Rolling Stone uh, magazine for unloading Las Vegas. Uh, Speaking of Ralph Steadman, I just wanted to show you this as well. So, Ralph, of course, had done various uh, depictions of the infamous Dr. Gonzo, uh, Hunter's attorney, in uh, this issue of uh, Rolling Stone magazine. But he had never actually done a portrait of Oscar Zeta Acosta um, until a recent... Uh, Re reissue by Tangerine Press, a really gorgeous production um, of uh, the autobiography of a brown buffalo. So it's a new new version of the the book by Oscar, and accompanying it was this uh, portrait by Ralph of Oscar. So there's only twenty six of these available. Uh, so yeah, very, very limited. If you didn't get one of those 26 editions of that book, uh, you don't get one of these. So you can see it there. Yeah. Um, that's not the only Las Vegas piece I want to show you. Um, so as I said, it's quite difficult to find uh, those issues of Rolling Stone magazine in uh, good quality. But I did find them, and these are probably my most treasured uh, possession. Uh, these are like new. So this issue of Rolling Stone has been flat stored for you know the best part of fifty years, and you can see the. I'm not going to open this one. <laughs> this is, um, you know, it's it's perfect. You can see there, the colors are still like the day it was published. So that's part one. And I also have part two. You can see there, again, like new. So, yeah, I was absolutely uh, thrilled to get my hands on those. Um, priceless to me, really. Um, just want to show you two or three other pieces. Um, again, this is from 1970, uh, Stag Annual. And <laughs> this one made me laugh when I found it. Um, the piece that's included uh, is the Angel Wreckers of uh, Bass Lake. 
and it's uh, an extract from Hells Angels and I believe it was published without Hunter's permission. I don't think he was even aware that they had done this. Um, it's a quite a it's quite an interesting magazine. It's it's a real uh, kind of a low rent uh, men's magazine. Um, I've never heard any mention of it by Hunter, um, and I it, it, this magazine did have a reputation of. Uh, publishing stuff without permission so I think that's what happened here um, but yeah that's if I can find the article here for you I'll show you so. just interesting to see the various different uh, magazines that Hunter had published his work in and there we go it does credit Hunter with the work um, but uh, I don't believe they actually had got permission from him to publish it so that's that and what else have we got back to fear and loathing in las vegas uh, just a quick look this is a cheap, cheap paperback version of uh, fear and loathing in las vegas not remarkable in any way except for the fact that it has been signed by ralph uh, with a drawing of hunter on the inside you can see his drawing of Hunter there. I don't believe the person who sold this had any idea uh, just quite what they had in their possession. So that was quite quite the find. And the next up I have actually got two uh, LP records. Um, first is from 1964, uh, The Big Sky Singers. Um, there we go. You might be asking what on earth has this got to do with Hunter S. Thompson? Um, Hunter got to know this group uh, in Big Sur. Um, Bruce Inns, who later became a neighbour of Hunter in Woody Creek, uh, quite a good friend of his, and they got Hunter to do the liner notes on the back, actually. So the back cover has a nice little essay by Hunter uh, about Big Sur and the Big Sky Singers. Um, quite a curiosity. So, yeah, that's a bit of an oddity. Um, but speaking of records, this is the other one. So, I'll show it to you here. This is a song by uh, James Booker. Gonzo. So you can see there's two interesting aspects. Obviously, Gonzo and the connection to Hunter's writing. Uh, apparently, Hunter was a big fan of this song. Um, and he had been playing it in his hotel room that he was sharing with Bill Cardoso, uh, who has been credited with coining the phrase Gonzo. And they were on assignment together covering uh, Nixon and Hunter was playing this record over and over and over and it drove Bill Cardoso crazy um, and he started calling him the Gonzo Man and then of course later on when Hunter wrote the uh, Kentucky Derby is decadent and depraved and Bill Cardoso read it he uh, sent Hunter a letter calling it pure Gonzo so that's a very interesting little connection but if you look at the label there's a peacock, which of course is also associated with Hunter. So it's Peacock Records. So yeah, he's based in Houston, Texas. Um, so that is quite a, an interesting uh, little Gonzo artifact. So James Booker, Gonzo, 45 RPM. So there we go.
Uh, as I said, this is just a small selection of a much, much bigger collection that I have. Um, but uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, bye for now.